Now it's never enough to talk about the Nabi Sallallahu for 10 minutes. There's no way. But what I wanted to focus on today, Inshallah Ta'ala, is how the Prophet Sallallahu cared for those people that have been forgotten. What do I mean? When the Prophet Sallallahu received revelation, and we all know the story, he runs to his wife Khadija radiallahu anha, he was shaking, and he goes to her and he says, cover me, cover me, zamiluni, zamiluni, the very famous story. Khadija immediately describes the Prophet Sallallahu by several descriptions. She says that you take care of your family, you take care of the needy, you honor your guests. She gives him multiple descriptions and multiple narrations. One of the descriptions that she gives the Prophet Sallallahu she says you are a person who does not neglect those who are forgotten. You take care of the people that the rest of the community have forgotten. So Allah will never disgrace you. And now when we look at the life of the Prophet Sallallahu you actually see that happening in multiple places. For example, one time, the Prophet goes to the masjid around Fajr time in the morning, and he doesn't find the cleaner of the masjid. There was a lady who used to clean the masjid. And she used to be in the masjid all the time. He doesn't find her. So he asks the companions, where is she? Where did she go? So the companions tell him, oh messenger of Allah, she died. She died last night. We buried her, we prayed to Naza, and we didn't think you needed to know. Because remember, back then when somebody would die, they would immediately wash them and, and bury them right there. You know, they wouldn't wait for salah like we do today. Because the graveyard was like that, there wasn't a lot of procedures. So a person dies, they wash them, they bury them immediately. So they told the Prophet that we didn't think you needed to know. The Prophet was so upset, was so upset, was so bothered by the fact that the companions didn't think she was important to him. Because the companions thought she was just cleaning the mission. She's not that important. So an Nabi وسلم, goes all the way to the graveyard, finds her grave, and he prays Janazah on her by himself. This is the only time in his life where he does that. Who is she? She used to clean the masjid. Do we know her name? We don't. We actually don't know her name. The Prophet وسلم, would walk around the city of Medina, and he would find little children, and he would ask them, how are you doing? One narration mentioned that he asked a child about his bird. How's your bird? Because this was a child that the community didn't care about. He was neglected. And so many stories like that. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about that same idea in the Quran. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the people of Jannah and Surah Al-Insan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that people of Jannah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make all of us from Jannah say I mean, they feed people food despite their love and need of the food. They love the food. They need the food. That food is important to them. But they give it. But who did they give it to? Three categories of people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Miskinan, the person in need. Now the person in need a lot of times at the time of the Prophet, they wouldn't go and beg around. The idea of begging was not did not exist in the, in the community of the Prophet. They just used to stay in the masjid and people will know that these people need food. So when you go to the masjid and you find somebody, you would invite them, hey, come over, I'll feed you. They would not ask. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is describing the people of Jannah by saying, they are gonna feed the miskeen because this miskeen will never ask. Because they have dignity. They have izzah, they will not ask. And the second category is al yatim the orphan. The orphan has no one to ask. He's an orphan, he doesn't have family. He doesn't have anybody to care for. And then the last is the asir, the one who's captive. The one in jail. 
You know, subhanAllah, and, and for those that, that, that know this, there are many scholars of our time that are in jail today for the last six, seven years. When was the last time we thought about them? When was the last time we brought, you know, we prayed for them and we made dua for them? The reality, my brothers and sisters, is that as a human being, it's very easy to forget people who are not in front of us. The Prophet was not like that. The Prophet would make it a point to remember the people who have been forgotten. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran he said, here, he says, those people of Jannah, they would feed the miskeen, the one who is needy because they're never going to ask. And the yateen, the orphan, because the orphan is never going to ask. And the asir, the captive, because the captive have no one to ask. And then they say something so powerful. Allah says, إِنَّمَا نُطْعِمُكُمْ لِوَجْهِ اللَّهِ لَا نُرِيدُ مِنْكُمْ جَزَاءً وَلَا شُكُورًا We are feeding you only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't want thanks and we don't want a reward. Now how come they don't want thanks? Isn't it naturally for the human being to want to be appreciated? And even the Prophet ﷺ told us, somebody does something to you, right? Whoever does something good to you, you, you compensate them, you reward them, you at least say thank you. Because it's a natural human being, it's, a, it's natural for us to say thank you. Or want people to appreciate. But how come these people, they say, we don't want you to give us reward, we don't want you to thank us, we don't want anything from you. We are only doing this for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't want anything in return. Even your things we don't want. You can keep it for yourself. Allah then says, The only thing that's driving us is that we are thinking about the Day of Judgment. We are thinking about the Day of Judgment. We are thinking about a day where our sadaqah will be our shade. When our deeds will be the only thing that can protect us from hellfire. Those individuals who give for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and help those who are in need and think about those who are forgotten, they think about nothing except the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave a powerful reward for a person who cares for the orphans. And I'll share that in the second part of the khutbah, inshaAllah. Qulu qawli hadha wa astaghfir adhi wa ilam wa astaghfir wa namur wa rahim. Me, the Prophet and the one who cares for the orphans are like this in Jannah. Well, why like this? Because the orphans are people or are children that everybody forgot. Nobody thinks about them. They have nobody to think for them. They have nobody to care for them. When we go and we make an effort to care for the orphans, then the Prophet says, on a day of judgment, you will be like that with the Prophet in Jannah. Now, why not like this? You know, the narration actually mentions the Prophet left a gap between his two fingers. You know why? Because the Prophet is going to be at a level of Jannah that is exclusive for him. None of us will have access to the level of the Prophet but the person who cares for the orphans will be the closest to the Prophet The one who cares for the orphans are going to be the closest one to a Nabi Wasallam in Jannah. We cannot be at the Prophet's level, but we will be the closest. So inshallah ta'ala, for those that walked in, and you guys have seen the table out there, I'm here on behalf of an organization that supports a region that is truly, truly forgotten. If I ask any of you guys, when was the last time you heard 
about Syria, most likely it's been years. But let me share a few things with you, Ta'ala. Perhaps you can support today. Over the last 12 years, my brothers and my sisters, 50% of the Syrian population have been displaced. That's 16.4 million people. 16 million people that have been displaced from their homes over the last 12 years. 90% of the Syrian population today are under the poverty line. That means families by upward of five or seven members do not have enough food to eat. Wallahi, true story. I was in California last week for a khutbah and a brother comes up to me and tells me a story of a father who works three jobs. Three jobs inside Syria. And he went to the marketplace to buy some food. And the only food he was able to buy with the money that he had was two eggs. Just two eggs. And then he went, he has a child, and he ended up giving these two eggs to his kid, and he didn't eat himself. Neither did he or his wife ate. And he has three jobs. Now, because we were talking about orphans today, in North Syria, which is a region that had about 5.2, 5.3 million people, in that region alone, there's over one million orphans. I want you to think about this number. One, that's 20% of the population are orphans. So inshallah, I'll end here. We do have Syria Forum, Alhamdulillah, as an organization. It's a 501c3, so it's tax exempt. It's also, again, legible giving that we are working in the region. And Alhamdulillah, we've been inside North Syria since 2013. So the organization, Alhamdulillah, works on the ground. We do not work outside of Syria. We are actually one of the only organizations that works inside North Syria. And Alhamdulillah, one of our programs is an orphan sponsorship program, which is a program that includes their daily sustenance plus their education. Because, you know, it's not just about feeding them, it's also about getting them educated. So, inshallah, I hope that some of you guys on your way out, uh, you can uh, you can obviously do a, we do have a great part machine. If you want to give cash, you can certainly give cash. If you want to do a pledge, which is the best thing to do, is just sponsor an orphan, it's $95 a month. You just sub submit it, and you don't have to think about it. And inshallah, you come on a day of judgment, and it'll be like that with the Prophet So I hope inshallah God, that out in the crowd here, inshallah, brothers and sisters, we're able to get few orphans, inshallah So stop by. For those that have to leave right away, you will see a, a, a little QR code. I know some of you have to go back to work. So just scan the QR code. It will take you directly to the orphan sponsorship, inshallah. Submit it. It's only $95 a month. So a couple, couple of dollars a day, inshallah You don't have to think about it, inshallah. Keep it running. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward all of you guys. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless this community. Allahumma khfidana dhunubana wa islam fina fi amrina 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 wa islam fina fi amrina
الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين سبح اسم ربك الأعلى الذي خلق فسوى والذي قدر فهدى والذي أخرج المرعى فجعله مثاء أحوى سنقرئك فلا تنسى إلا ما شاء الله إنه يعلم الجهر وما يخفى ونيسرك لليسرى فذكر إن نفعت الذكرى سيذكر من يخشى وتجنبها الأشقى الذي يصلى النار الكبرى ثم لا يموت فيها ولا يحيا الله أكبر سمع الله من حمده الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله 